The man, in terror, pulled the mirror in front of him and discovered not only severe eye injuries but also a hood on his neck embedded with nails. Michael quickly stood up from the chair and surveyed the surroundings as the television screen nearby lit up. Hello, Michael. I want to play a game. The murderous Jigsaw has recently become well known to the public due to a spate of horrific backroom torture and murder cases. Unfortunately, Michael had become the next unlucky victim. If Michael doesn't find the key before the countdown ends, the nail-covered hood will close like a flytrap. Michael's eye injury was the result of surgery performed by Jigsaw a few hours ago. Jigsaw had placed the key behind Michael's eyeball. Live or die. Make your choice. In order to live, Michael had to gouge the key out of his eye himself. But this cruel method deterred him from, as the countdown slowly ended and the hood closed in the next second, Michael was stabbed through and through by the nails inside the hood. Soon after, the police discovered the body with a Jigsaw-style death, and the victim was revealed to be an informant for Detective Eric. Jigsaw leaves a provocative message on the wall for Eric, but the device trademark allows Eric to quickly find Jigsaw's lair. He led a large team to surround and arrest Jigsaw. Eric approached, arrogantly taunting. Hey. Is this close enough? And prepared to take Jigsaw away. However, Jigsaw's words made Eric pause. It turned out that Jigsaw intentionally left clues to get himself arrested. As it was a crucial premise for his next evil game, the room was filled with numerous monitors, indicating that somewhere, a thrilling life-or-death game was taking place. What startled Eric was discovering that one of the participants was his son, Daniel. Eric quickly called his son to confirm, but the other end remained unanswered, leaving him in despair. The police immediately notified the technical team to trace the signal, but Eric had lost his composure, ready to interrogate Jigsaw directly. Yet, his teammates restrained him. Jigsaw stated that those people were trapped in a room releasing poison gas, and in two hours, they would succumb to the poison. After hearing this, Eric bluntly declared that if anything happened to his son, he would make Jigsaw regret being alive. But Jigsaw, a cancer patient, was unfazed, claiming he only wanted Eric to stay behind and have a private conversation. Eric immediately discussed with his teammates. Carrie believed they should appease him and buy time. Rig suggests they do it the old-fashioned way. Watching the helpless Daniel on the monitor, Eric knew his decision would affect his son's fate. Meanwhile, in the locked room, several individuals were anxiously searching for an exit, but the sturdy iron door left them with no options. Amid their heated discussion, the last person finally woke up from unconsciousness. However, upon understanding the situation, she immediately broke down, frantically searching the room. She quickly found a tape recorder behind a wall tile. It was then revealed to everyone that the room was releasing poison gas, and they were already heavily poisoned. The antidotes were hidden throughout the house. One of the antidotes was in the safe in front of them, and the password was in the recesses of their thoughts. If they discovered their commonality, they would understand why they were bound here, and the clue was at the marked X location. This disjointed information left them puzzled and confused. Xavier finds the note and key dropped with the tape recorder, which says not to try to open the door with the key. Instead, he thought the other guy was playing a trick on them, and he was going to open the door and get out of there. Yet, as he turned the key, the device connected to the lock outside instantly activated, shooting Gus, who was observing through the peephole. In the eye, the sight left everyone stunned, and they now realized that the threat was real. Jonas quickly grabbed the woman on the floor and questioned her about what she knew. It turned out the woman was Amanda, who had participated in a death game before, and now, unluckily, found herself caught up in another. Meanwhile, witnessing the death of someone, Eric became increasingly anxious, fearful of angering Jigsaw. He decided to first use a gentle approach to keep the situation under control. Following the instructions, Eric had his teammates leave, and then he sat down to negotiate with Jigsaw. Unbeknownst to Jigsaw, Eric discreetly turned on the radio to let his teammates listen in. Jigsaw wanted to play a game with Eric. The rule was that Eric would sit and listen to him, and when the time was up, Daniel would emerge in a safe place. Eric could only temporarily suppress his inner anxiety and endure the ramblings of the other party. On the other side, just as the group was at a loss, the iron door that had claimed a life slowly creaked open, Xavier cautiously stepped out, immediately grabbing the nail-studded club in the corner. The others followed suit and stepped outside, quickly locating the house's main door. Drawing from their previous experience, Xavier, being careful, attempted to unlock the door. However, the key in his hand proved ineffective. Observing this, Jonas quickly picked it up, 
Foreseeing its potential usefulness, frustrated, Xavier swung the club, but the iron door behind him dashed their hopes. They finally understood that brute force wouldn't solve the problem, they had to continue searching inside the house. Laura then discovered that the basement door could be opened, and they hurriedly entered. They see the dummy with a dagger in it and an envelope with Obi written on it, which is the name of one of them, they promptly played the tape. It turns out that Jigsaw hired Obi to kidnap the others and he became one of the prey. In the pipe ahead were two antidotes, but only they could save themselves. Filled with righteous anger, they pressured Obi to reveal an escape route, but he knew nothing, some were already reacting to the poison. Obi promised to go in and retrieve the antidote as redemption, he bent down and crawled into the pipe. He successfully retrieved the first antidote, but as he reached for the second, the connecting door closed. In the next second, flames ignited, turning the pipe into a deadly furnace. Outside, they desperately tried to open the iron door to no avail. The outer metal was becoming scorching hot with the growing fire. Finally, someone noticed a window at the back. Xavier quickly smashed it with the club, but the window was too small for Obi to escape. He ultimately burned alive in the pipe and the antidote was incinerated in the inferno. As another person died tragically in the game, Rig questioned the point of these actions, deeming it a waste of time. They had another argument over a difference of opinion. Simultaneously, Eric, growing increasingly impatient with Jigsaw's nonsensical ramblings, couldn't bear it any longer. He broke the rules, got up and walked away. On the other side, as the toxins intensified within Laura, her strength began to wane. Daniel had no choice but to support her as they continued searching the house. The group noticed an unlocked room that wouldn't budge when pushed. At the same time, Xavier, now with blood streaming from his nose and mouth, realizing time was running out, forcefully pushed against the door. Unbeknownst to him, this triggered a mechanism inside, and a countdown timer on the iron door immediately started ticking. They hurriedly played the tape in the room. This game was designed for Xavier to see how a drug dealer like him would react when confronted with his favorite thing. Behind the iron door was an antidote, but if they didn't open the door before the countdown ended, it would lock permanently. The key was hidden in a trap under the bed, filled with a multitude of syringes. Xavier had to fish out the key from the needle-filled pit. Witnessing the horrifying scene, Xavier was too terrified to go down. He grabbed Amanda and threw her into the pit. Needles pierced Amanda's body. But Xavier urged her to quickly find the key. In immense pain, Amanda overturned in the sea of needles and finally found the key with just seconds to spare. Xavier rushed forward to unlock the door, but it was too late. The iron door, now locked by the countdown's end, sealed shut. At this point, Daniel had rescued Amanda, but Xavier, without a shred of sympathy, was furious and ready to punish her. Jonas rushes to stop Xavier. Addison puts a stop to this ridiculous infighting. Listening to the tape, Addison realized Jigsaw knew all their names. They had overlooked something. After discussing, they found that the only commonality among them was a history of incarceration, which didn't apply to Daniel. Xavier believed that discussing this was pointless and decided to leave to continue searching for an exit. On the other hand, as the danger in the locked room escalated, the police had no leads, and time was running out. With only half an hour remaining, at this moment, Carrie sees the mechanism designed by Jigsaw on the wall, and it suddenly occurs to her that she can threaten Jigsaw by destroying the work. With no luck, Eric can only try, but no matter how much Eric tries to destroy the artwork, Jigsaw won't budge. Moreover, Jigsaw was well aware they were eavesdropping through the radio. Jigsaw instructed them to take out the file from the second drawer. It turned out that everyone in the locked room had been caught and sent to prison by Eric. Now, his son was trapped with this group, and if they discovered Daniel's identity, it would spell disaster. Upon hearing this, Eric's breakdown deepened. At this point, weakened by the spreading toxins, they stumbled through the house, but their search yielded nothing. Xavier returns to the original room, while dragging the wolfsbane. The clothes covering the body are hooked away, and Xavier tries to put the clothes back on, but he accidentally discovers that there is a number on the back of the body's neck. That's the combination to the same. Thank God. The Xavier immediately understands what the recording means, and Jonas walks in, persuading them that they should cooperate. Now knowing the answer, Xavier, reluctant to share the secret, took out a knife and instructed Jonas to turn away. Jonas is confused, but he makes the first move and takes Xavier to the ground in a few strikes. <laughs> However, the intense fight caused the toxin to rapidly spread, leading Jonas to spew a significant amount of blood. Xavier struggling to stand, seized the wolf's tooth club and delivered a fatal blow from behind. 
causing Jonas's demise. Having checked Jonas's neck for the number, Xavier promptly moved to find the others. Laura, the most deeply poisoned, collapsed to the ground. In her weakened state, she accidentally discovered the location marked X's shattered frame. Addison quickly removed it and found a photo of Eric and his son Daniel on the back. They now realize that Daniel was Eric's son, but before they can react, Laura can't hold out any longer and dies from the poison, and this could be their own self in the near future. With this in mind, Addison also lost the mood to give Daniel a hard time and turned away alone. Amanda, ignoring Daniel, departed as well, but it wasn't long before Amanda saw the dead Jonas, and she immediately turned back and pulled Daniel away. Meanwhile, Xavier, having examined the numbers on the other bodies, shouted that he had found a way out and urged them to come out. However, they remained unmoved, engaging in a game of hide-and-seek with Xavier, but due to the limited terrain, they were eventually blocked by Xavier, and they immediately ran away frantically. Observing his son in imminent danger, Eric lost his composure and approached Jigsaw with a gun in hand. Carrie rushes forward to persuade him, but her teammates put up a wall to stop Carrie. Eric opted for the most straightforward and effective method to force Jigsaw to reveal the house's location. <laughs> Soon, Jigsaw was beaten, blood streaming from his mouth and nose, yet he continued to taunt Eric's incompetence. At the same time, Addison accidentally pushed open a door, revealing the coveted antidote suspended within a glass case. In a daze, Addison reached in without hesitation, accidentally spilling the antidote. Frantically, she attempted to retrieve it with her other hand, only to find herself unable to pull it out due to the obstructing hooked blades. Hearing Addison's cries for help, Xavier rushed over but instead of rescuing her, he checked the number on her neck and left, closing the door behind him. On the other side, Jigsaw, battered by Eric, refused to reveal the house's location. Seeing this, Eric decided to close the communication and, preparing to end Jigsaw's life, took out his gun. At this point, Jigsaw is finally scared, but he has one request. He can only take Eric to the house alone, but while his teammates allow Eric to extract a confession, there's no way they're going to let him take the prisoner alone. Jigsaw claimed the button on the wall could free them both. Desperate for his son, Eric broke the rules. Pressing the button, a metal gate dropped, sealing them off, and a concealed elevator descended rapidly. Despite their attempts to catch up, Eric had already driven away when his teammates reached the surface. Fortunately, the technical team decoded the signal and traced the video's location. The police rushed to the scene. On the other side, Amanda and Daniel, Having returned to the initial room, closed the iron door, Xavier relentlessly pounded on the door to break in, seeing that they can't hold on any longer, Amanda grabbed the wolfsbane from the corpse and stuck it on the floor of the door, but that only stopped Xavier's progress for a while. At that moment, Amanda realized that the blood stains were flowing down the cracks in the floor, and she immediately reacted to the fact that there should be a secret room underneath the hidden door, rushing forward. They pushed the safe aside, discovering a locked door, with the wolf's tooth club slightly loosening from Xavier's continuous pounding. Daniel remembered the key from earlier, he quickly found it, and before Xavier could enter, they opened the secret door and descended. However, Xavier witnessed their escape, opening the secret door and chasing after them, they ran through the passage. Amanda forcefully opened the iron door, and as the lights came on, they were greeted by several desiccated corpses and dried bloodstains. The saw on the floor reminds them that horror games were once played here. Daniel, succumbing to the toxins, spewed a large amount of blood. When Xavier entered, Daniel collapsed and died. But Xavier, indifferent, only needed the number from Daniel's neck. Left alone, Amanda threatened Xavier, claiming he wouldn't know his own number without her assistance. However, with only one antidote available, Xavier made a cruel decision, cutting off his own skin. As Xavier prepared to carry out his plan, Daniel unexpectedly fought back. Grabbing a saw from the ground, he swiftly slit Xavier's throat. Meanwhile, Eric, guided by Jigsaw, arrived. Jigsaw handed him a key hidden beneath tape. Upon unlocking the chain, Eric entered the room and discovered several victims' bodies, along with an open vial of the antidote. He couldn't determine who had obtained the antidote. Following the hidden door, Eric descended. Simultaneously, the larger police force arrived at the signal location. However, the commander couldn't see them on the monitor. 
and a thorough search revealed another set of monitors in the room. It was only then that the police realized that what they had seen was video footage and that the group had died some time ago. On the other hand, Eric finally reaches the deepest part of the room, where dried blood shows that Xavier has been dead for a long time. And he finally realizes that something is not right, but the clean hands in the bathtub gave him a glimmer of hope. And Eric carefully stepped over to them, but in the very next second, the masked man suddenly stood up and gave him an injection. Despite Eric's attempt to draw his gun, he succumbed to unconsciousness. As the countdown ended, the safe behind Carrie automatically opened, revealing Daniel, bound and helpless. Meanwhile, Eric regained consciousness. On the ground, he noticed a familiar cassette tape. However, this time, it played Amanda's voice. You probably don't even remember me. But you changed my life once. You sent me to prison. Amanda had survived the previous game and was bowled over by the idea of a jigsaw puzzle. She willingly joined forces with him, planning this life or death game targeting Eric. It's so simple. What you have to do is sit here and talk to me. What? If you can do that long enough, you will find your son in a safe and secure state. Every word spoken by Jigsaw was true. It was a game of testing patience, and those who stayed calm emerged as the ultimate winners. However, the game was doomed to be unfair from the start because no one could sit there calmly. Eric's eruption was expected, but the cost was the chaining of his legs. Now, Amanda approached. Game over. I'll fucking kill you! I'll fucking back! Listening to Eric's hysterical roar, Jigsaw knew he had once again won the game. 